Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you again tonight. We give you all the praise and glory uh, as we go into today's session. On the subject of purpose, Lord, we pray that you guide us, lead us. At the end, let all the glory and honor be to you in the name, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So once again, everyone, I welcome you all um, tonight. I, I have no doubt in my mind that this is a very topical conversation that we need to have, a reminder of who we are. So for the purpose of this tonight's session, it's you know, dealing with the subject purpose-driven life. Purpose-driven life. And I also, like I always say, I, you know, I like you to listen very carefully for a word that is specific to you. Um, by way of outline, we'll be talking about the introduction. We'll be going through some powerful quotes that I've compiled. And I believe, you know, they themselves are a reminder of why it's important to be purpose-driven. Um, how do we discover purpose, for example? Who are those that have lived life of purpose and made meaningful life, fulfilled life? And then, of course, we'll be concluding with a couple of thoughts that I believe will be a takeaway for us. The um, Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, it says, To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, what that means, basically, that everything under heaven has purpose. So, they, you know, our time and seasons of life, so there's a purpose for why we're young, for when we go old. You know, the resources that comes to our hand, there's a purpose for why you are blessed at a time in your life. And what you need to do with those blessings is a purpose. Uh, my tomorrow says something very profound. He says, when you don't know um, the purpose of your thing, abuse becomes inevitable. Very powerful statement. But let me remind you, everyone of you, that man is first and foremost a, you know, a creation of purpose. God, when God created man, if you all remember the book of Genesis, when he created man, there's a purpose why he created man. He said, let us now make man in our image. And then he gave man a purpose to tender and to care for the garden he has created. That's why one of the Critical skills you and I must, you know, must, must learn is how to manage resources, how to, how to tend and take care of things kept in our hand. There are talents, there are endowment that you'll see shortly that what I'm giving you. How do you manage that effectively? And how do you turn those things into profitable engagements? So man is an entity of purpose and man is an entity of destiny. So with the purpose towards an end, Jesus said for this work, for this reason have I come to destroy the works of the devil. It's the purpose why he came. So living life without a purpose is living with the dead, somebody said. Um, purpose makes life meaningful, fulfilling. It gives us a reason to look up every day and be excited to give our best, our best shot at whatever we do. If you check all through history, you see that men of exploits are men of purpose. It takes purpose to make life meaningful. So tonight, what I'm trying to do is to sell to you, to market to you the solid of purpose again. Some of us have found purpose. Some of us have not found. If you have found it, what are you doing about it? If you have not found it, I believe this session will be very illuminating for you. So living a life of purpose involves discovering your personal value system, your interests, your goals. As you align with something greater, a sense of meaning and purpose. Purpose is, uh, you know, um, I will call it a sense of direction and meaning in life. It underlines the motivation, your, your drives towards pursuing certain goals and aspirations, for example. In purpose can be seen, you know, particularly from the kingdom perspective as what I call higher calling, a reason for existence. Why do you exist? As a matter of fact, you must have to ask the question, why do I exist? As a guiding principle that influences your decision making on a day to day basis, your actions, your decision making is all tied to your purpose. So you must have a sense of purpose, for example. It provides all of us, I would say, you know, that sense of satisfaction, fulfillment, happiness, if you like. How do we prioritize our time? You should be tied to our purpose. Otherwise, you'll be wasting time. You'll be majoring in, in your minor and minor in your major. So purpose is what helps us to define where we should be by time, or what the kind of thing should, be, should we be involved in, and so on and so forth. And purpose can be found in different areas, such as in our careers, our business, family life, our spiritual life, our personal growth. In your, our, our influence on our community. Why do we exist in this community? Why am I staying in this area of, of town? It's a purpose. Why am I here for this season of my life? Why am I, as I'm single now, what's the purpose of my being single for now? As I'm you know, married, what's the purpose of being married now? There must be a purpose. We must define those things. You know? And of course, it's very important uh, you know, as we do to remind ourselves 
Now there are a couple of quotes here I want to just share a couple of them. Um, hopefully I'll be able to share this slide with all of you. Uh, it was Mark Twain that said something very profound. He said the two most important days in your life are the days you are born and the days you find out why. <laughs> very interesting. The days you are born and then the day you find out why were you born. Um, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson says the purpose of life is not to be happy, it is to be useful, mm. to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you lived and you lived well. You're talking about making a difference. That's why you are here on Heart, for example. Pablo Picasso said the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Find your gift and give that gift away. Meaning that purpose is not about yourself, it's about others. Influencing the world to become a better place than you have found it. Steve Jobs said something very profound, and I think it's important for us to talk about it here. He said, the only way to do greater work is to love what you do. And what you do is always tied. What you, enjoying what you do is tied to your purpose. If you ever know what it means to enjoy your work, it means you are doing the work that you are tied to. There's a purpose in it for you. If you haven't found it yet, he said, keep looking at it for you. Don't settle. He said, as with all matters of the heart, you will know when you find it. And that's one thing about purpose. When you are working in purpose, you will, it's not work for you. You find it, you, you are excited about it. You enjoy doing it. Everyone, when, when other people think that men, you are, you, are, you are suffering, say, no, I'm enjoying it because this is what I've, made, I've been made for. The purpose of life, someone said, Robert Brand said, is a life of purpose, meaning a life that is driven by something bigger than you are. And Mark Monroe said very profoundly, he said, the greatest tragedy at all in life is not death, but a life without purpose. So, so what I was saying here tonight is that the purpose is, is a very critical subject. And all I'm doing tonight is to remind every one of us that, hey, whoever you are, why do you exist? And if you have found it, what are you doing about it? So let's talk about the 10 different ways you can find purpose. Number one is a divine call. I mean, you have all through Bible history, you see God call people, you know. They were just existing and then a call came from heaven and said, hey boy, Abraham, for example, get you out of your father's land and to your land I will show you and then I will bless you and multiply you and through you, Shahal, your families of the head be blessed. Today we are all, you know, sons and daughters of Abraham, for example. It was a divine call for him. His purpose was a divine call. Not many of us will find that way. Number two way to find purpose is your belief system. Sometimes your belief may drive you towards saying, look, this is what I believe in. And then as you believe, as you have, as you engage in that belief system, you find purpose. For many of us, accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior was what brought us closer to the Holy Spirit at that point us to watch what we should be doing. This is your, this is your purpose in life. The Holy Spirit, he said, it will show you things to come. It's about our belief. Accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior brought us towards that you know, that, that compass of direction of life. Say, boy, this is where you belong. Girl, this is where you belong, for example. Now, my three, for many of you, you may say, oh, I don't have a divine call. I do, yes, I believe Christ, I follow, but I don't seem to find the answer. Maybe your value system, number three, your values, what do you value? Some people value integrity, and that defines the kind of job they do. They don't take any kind of things. You know, they have, you know, their value system drives them. What do you value? Maybe a pointer to your purpose in life. Number four, it could be your gifts or your talents. Your gifts, or, you know, if you've got the Bible of, the Bible of talent, for example, you know, what have you done with that gift? It's a gifting inside of you that you, you know, that you may not be aware of, or a talent that you enjoy. Some people can, you know, um, can, can talk very well. Some people can, they are very good in hand things. It could be a pointer, perhaps to why you are not, to make things, you know, more beautiful. Some of you can do, um, you know, can, can, can write. Some people can, you know, it just comes. It's a gifting. It comes natural. Some people can play some sports effectively. It could be a pointer, you know, that will connect to the bigger course in life. Number five, it could be your drive, your passion. What are you passionate about, for example? What exactly are you passionate about? What drives you that if you do, you don't even feel like eating. You're just, you know, on, on the drive, as they call it, on auto. Number six, it could be your strengths. Or, you know, strength here could be something you just... You don't have a struggle to get it done. It just happens. You, people say, oh, I struggle to do this. No, 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 I don't struggle to do that. It's a strength, an endowment of God. Now, myself, sometimes bubbles in life will be your experience. You could have seen some things in life and you're like, no, 
no, this is not right. I think I, I think I should go to correct this in life before I go. So you're somewhat how you could be experiences. If you look at the story of people like Mandela, for example, in, in South Africa, people in his, his country was under apartheid. They said, no, this is not nice. Let's do something about this, for example. And then, you know, they began to, you know, a move towards, you know, liberty, for example. It could be like, like in, in the U.S., for example, there was apartheid, there was this segregation in the U.S. They said, no, this is not nice. Man should not be treated this way. This experience, we don't love, we don't enjoy this experience. Let's change it. And then they began the movement for change, for example. Now, my could be what inspires you. There are things, some, some things that inspires you when you, when you get to those things, it just inspires you, for example. What are those things? You know, and that's where some people catch, you know, purpose. And of course, number nine here, it could be your, your, the questions you ask about life. For example, why do I exist? Because if you, like I said earlier, the quality of the question you ask defines the quality of your life. So what kind of questions can you do or ask? Why do I exist on here? Why do I have these resources this time? Why am I blessed with this kind of thing for this time in my life? What do I need to do differently about this? And number 10, sometimes there could be water and annoys you, what irritates you, that you want to change, and then purpose is, is given back. There's a certain going on that you think, no, this, this should not be. It just annoys you, it just irritates you. Some people, for example, like, they don't like people, you know, that maybe they, they, that behave in a particular way. They say, no, how can I correct this thing? This is not right. You know, I, I know a lot of NGOs have been built around what people don't like to see, what irritates them. They say, no, poverty is not nice. Let me start a, you know, a, in a poverty driven project. All of these, from divine call to the, the to your belief to value system to your gifts and talents to drive and passion to strength and endowment to your experience to what inspires you to questions, sincere questions you're asking about life and to what annoys you. All of these are platform. You and I can discover um, purpose. And if you look all through biblical history and look at contemporary time, you see men and women who lived purpose. Jesus, I said earlier, he said, for this purpose was I, man, the son of man manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Abraham had a powerful call. He was just on his own in his father's compound. And then God said, boy, get you out of the father's house. Now I want to show you a land. I want to bring you into a new place. You know, Noah was, you know, out there, for example, and then God said, no, I will never destroy man again. I need you to do this, for example. And he had a found purpose because it was a, it was a call, it was a divine calling. Nehemiah, for example, was a passion, which was a passion for him. He just felt, no, this is not nice. How can this thing happen to my, to my country? No, I want to make it, I want to make it change. At the AMP, for example, one of the things that happened to us was like, look, I saw people who were Christians struggling in life. And I said, no. The, the God said that there's an army of men that will be from men of the kingdom that will shine the world. But we're not seeing this example. Rather, we are seeing people unbelievers shining the world. What can we do? Let's create a platform where people of the kingdom will come together and remind ourselves of kingdom principles combined with business principles and then we'll become a star in town. Become men and women of color and dignity out there in town. Men that people will see. Men like Job. Job was a man of the kingdom and yet he was the greatest of the, in his own days. Why can't we be? So let's do AMP. That's why we are here, for example. Martin Lacking, I said earlier, you know, was he saw the abject, you know, the discrimination going on in the US. Um, and then he said, no, this is not right. So what, what, so what are we saying? Mandela, the same thing in South Africa. What am I saying here tonight is that every one of us must recognize that we need to live a life of purpose. And that bigger, that thing must be bigger than us. It must be something bigger than what we, what, what, what we, beyond what we eat, what we drink. It must be a life that seeks to make the world a better place than we have found it. A life that exists to be able to use our endowment, our talents, to make the world a better place. An endowment that will continue to strive towards make, living a profitable living, not for ourselves alone, but to serve others, to become um, you know, to use our giftings, our, you know, to advance, for example, um, the, what, what in the kingdom of God, it said, through your prosperity, through the things that are given to you, I want to see you transform the world. So I will leave the world a better place. Now, I said here in, in my notes, I ran up right now, that discovering your purpose is a journey. It may take time. It may take patience. It may take self-reflection. But, but I beg of you, be open to the process and trust that with effort and intention, you will find your way. What is God over my life, for example? What is God over for this stage of my life? 
this resources in my hand for what benefit for me? What is the purpose for this benefit of the, of the resources in my hand today? This phase of my life, this season of my life, what is the purpose? It's a question we must always be asking, genuinely so, particularly in our prayer life. Our ultimate purpose here, let me remind you all of this one to serve God and the interest of his kingdom, to serve humanity. As a matter of fact, humanity, it's, it's what, why he put us on head is to make sure that we have certain things that we, that he has given to us to bless the world, to make the world a better place, to serve an interest or a cause, like I said here, that is bigger than everyone of us. Living a lot of purpose is about contributing based on God's deposits inside of you that make your journey on earth remarkable. So that very shortly, uh, you know, you know, in a, in, in a space of time, when people reflect on you, and when they talk about you, for example, they clear in their mind that you came, you saw, and indeed you conquered. That is a life of purpose. That's why I said earlier, I'm open to the that men of purpose are men of exploit. Women of purpose are women of exploit. If you trace all through human history, those who constantly remind themselves that they exist on head for a purpose are the ones that make a mark in life. And my prayer today is that every one of you listening to me, um, you will find purpose. And if you have found it, you will fulfill destiny in the grand star. Every day that we wake up, it's a reminder that something inside of you that God wants to unleash to the world. For many of you, it could be, you know, serving at different levels. For many of you, it could be, you know, in your career, doing what you do so best in a way that when anybody encounter you, they know that this is a man of one of purpose. Living a life of intention, a life that is driven by a bigger cause, other than just to eat, to drink, and to live life. But a life that seeks to not only um, you know, find purpose for him or herself, but to use as cause to make the world a better place. I believe strongly that what you have tonight is a reminder of who you are. And my prayer as always is that every one of you listening to me right now will find purpose and you fulfill destiny in a grand style. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you once again for this session. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. And the Father, I pray that everyone listening to me at this hour, Lord, will encounter you in a new way. Will find purpose. And they have found purpose. Lord, the grace required um, to manifest destiny in a grand style. So that one of our times, you know, is done on earth. Um, our generation after, even this generation will remember that we came. And we are men who women of purpose who fulfill destiny in a grand style and leave the world, um, you know, a better place than we we'll found it. Love we say thank you once again in Jesus' precious name. Amen.